Strap yourself in for the preferred infant at available in the student shop. Hi everybody, this is Dan Chinder on Drum Talk TV and we're here at the Peacemakers in Costa Mesa, California with Viola Smith. How are you, Viola? Fine, thank you. Thanks so much for making time in your day it's for us pleasure. to sit with you. Um, in case you've lived under a rock for the last hundred years, Viola mm -hmm. Smith uh, just turned 102 years old recently. Um, you look about 62, oh, so you're, you're wow. doing pretty good. <laughs> well, better have your eyes examined. <laughs> <laughs> and Viola is a truly a drumming pioneer. So before we go any further, I want to show you who Viola Smith is and the pioneering that she did in the drumming world. Here she is in 1939. Check this out. I'd like you to meet our very charming little drummer, Viola Smith. So now that you've seen her playing and her very unique drum set, even by today's standards, it was quite a different world then, wasn't it? Not just musically, but socially oh, heavens, and a everything. Different world. Yeah. I can't believe you know what happened in the last fifty years, for instance. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, so you started playing drums quite young in a family where you had nine siblings. Is that right? Uh, I had eight sisters, no, seven sisters, and two brothers. Right, and so there were ten of us. Ten And eight children. of us were in the orchestra. Eight of us were, eight and, of you were the orchestra. And we were all played piano. We all had to start on piano. We had three pianos at home, two pianos and an organ. But my two brothers were practicing piano, and little, little boys, and they overheard Dad say that he's going to have an all-girl orchestra. Well, when they heard that, that was the end of the practicing. No more piano from then on at all. Oops. There was no point in practicing. And it was true. There was no point, really? in, point in it. Really? funny. And the eight of us traveled for two years during school vacations. What was the age range back from, then? Uh, of... uh, when we were uh, on the orchestra, in the orchestra, mm -hmm. 
one of the youngest was 16 and the oldest probably in the late 20s. I don't know the okay. exact span, but yeah. all close together. And how is it that you ended up being the lucky one to be the drummer? Did you throw darts? Did you pull straws? I couldn't have wished for anything better. It's the older, see, I was the sixth one, and the older ones were the ones who got the instruments, like the piano first, and then the piano and the violin. Third was the saxophone, and then came the trumpet, and then the trombone, and lo and behold, I was next. And Dad said, now we need a drummer. Thank God I was it. And were you excited about that at the time? At the Did you time, realize at the how time, what a blessing I, I that felt was? sorry for my sisters blowing away those <laughs> horns. Uh, you know, I felt sorry for it. The first. It's not a girl's job to play trumpet and trouble. Right. No, I mean, but I never drumming, being that acrobatic and that physical, was fun, yeah. Yes. We already had the fun, the drum there. I always, Dad always had so many instruments. We had a trombone hanging on the cellar steps for a long, long time. And then uh, this before the sister had to be. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody said something, hey, there's a trombone hanging on the front so, so, of the steps. And uh, and that's the girl ahead of me got the trombone and oh, <laughs> like, I didn't get it. Missed so it by that I much. Missed it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, would you, did your father play all yeah. those instruments? He did? No, he just, he was a, a, a cornet player and in his was, own orchestra okay. before he got married. <coughs> mm -hmm. Excuse me. Uh, so, uh, it was natural. And my mother had a beautiful singing voice, but she never was, a, uh, never had a, an instrument that mm -hmm. she played. Was your dad so, like the musical director then of the all girl well, orchestra of the was, family? Yeah, he mm -hmm. he had us all start on piano. Mm -hmm. The elder ones always taught the the younger ones when right. they came. And the first few took lessons from piano teachers. Mm -hmm. and the rest of us down farther heard from our, our older sisters. That's and, where we got our piano lessons. And did he select the music the band would play? Yes, he did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you, how did you learn drums? Did you take formal lessons? Did your dad just say, here's some drums, go yeah, figure it out? Yeah, it starts, here are the drums that were lying around anyway. And I, at age 13, uh, we, had, we had a first cousin who was a professional drummer mm -hmm. living nearby. Mm -hmm. So he's the one who's gotten me started the right way. Oh. But I also... From then on, as I traveled in the early years, we played the theaters, the RKO, RKO uh, Keith Baudwell circuit. Mm -hmm. It was the first thing we played during school vacations. And uh, there, the, uh, the drum outfit, I mean the drummers in the pit, I would really take lessons, I'd pay them. Oh. Different, uh, each, so each, you got a lot of different the, influences. Each theater, I mean each, uh, uh, like house booking, orchestra booking uh -huh. was a was a week. Oh, okay. Various places a week long, and I would get my lessons from these drummers. So you had a lot them. of different and influences, real, right? Yeah, a lot of different drummers were teachers until I got to New York later, much much later. Yeah. Um, then mm -hmm. I studied with Billy what? Gladstone. Oh. I studied with Billy Gladstone. Have you heard of him? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. He was my teacher in New York. He came to me. He saw me play some place in New York. And he, t he said, come over to Radio City Music Hall. I want to show you something. And it turned out that he became my teacher. He, um, he had a drum. He, he was making drums. Oh. Very beautiful. Mm -hmm. Very beautiful drums. In fact, I got one. They sold for $500. Even gold. back then? The gold, gold. Oh, wow. And I gave it to... I, no, I didn't give it to him. I sold it because, um, you know, um, Ted... Ted uh, Rich, wait a minute, no, not Rich, but Rich. Uh, Ted Reed, you know oh, Ted, Ted Reed? Reed. Yeah, he was absolutely. also my teacher. So Ted Reed is the one who was, was made a big collection of Billy Gladstone drums. Mm. He had 10 of them, all of, uh, everyone. He got it from, from uh, Krupa, and he got it, got it from, from all the drummers. Mm -hmm. Louis Belson, wow. they all had drummers, drums from Billy Gladstone. So Ted Reed made a collection of them, a very expensive collection. And he mounted them and traveled with them. And they to different um, music studios and, you know. Just to dead. show them, correct? He died rather early on, too bad. Right. Was it yeah. to show them To show off? them yeah. off, it, mm -hmm. it used them as a, yeah, traveled with them. What was the most important thing you learned as a young drummer from another drummer who was teaching you? Was there one thing that really stood out that helped you throughout your whole drumming career? You mean in, in, in how to play? In, yeah, in, in, yeah. Well, the, all those drummers were doing the, 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 the uh, 
Gene Cooper, not Gene Cooper, but he also had the same style. Mm -hmm. They all follow Billy Gladstone's style of drumming. Right. You know, the same thing. Right, in the traditional grip. Same, Buddy Rich. Right. But uh, Billy, I mean, uh, Gene. Gene Cooper uh -huh. and uh, Louis Belson. I don't know about other drummers, but those three drummers, I mean, you got to see them a lot. Yeah. So, and Louis Belson came to see me three times when I was playing. Really? Do you know why? He why? told me. He said, he, I said, I wanted, I just had to figure out how you set up all these drums. I had 13 drums, two up here, right. one up here, one here, 16 inch tom toms on both sides. Mm -hmm. So I was the only one using that. And nobody ever copied it. Right. I mean, I was very lucky. I mean, all through my whole career, nobody ever came along. I always expected somebody else was going to do to the start same thing. doing it. And sealed my thunder. <laughs> yeah, but it was your trademark all so, along. So nobody ever, ever copied it. So and, that Louis ex Belson, this explains why Louis is so well, good. Louis, but because Louis Belson did, did something. He got two, drum, two bass drums, remember? Louis yeah, Belson with the two drums. Absolutely. So that's, he wanted the extra drum because he couldn't figure it out. He had to put two drums. He didn't know drums. what to do with this, so no, he, well, he got the extra bass drum. Well, anyways, he got something out of it. He figured out the two bass drums. He liked that, liked that extra bass sound mm -hmm. that I got out of the three of them. Face yeah. drum and the three. Right. And so he got it out of his two, he was like this, you know. Yeah, with the like. double pedal. <laughs> interesting. Do you find it interesting how, like, we haven't talked yet about the type of music you listen to today, but certainly through the years, you've heard not only music evolve, but the way music is recorded evolve. I mean, like, when you were listening to music, when you were learning how to play the drums, what were the recordings on? Were they on big 78s? Oh, yes. Yeah. They were still on 78s. Mm -hmm. And do you know what I still have to figure out? Gee, I have to look into this. I have. I keep putting it off. The 78s, when, this, when they 78s changed to the, the, the 33. 33s, yeah. They, uh, they go, the 33s are a little bit faster. Mm. And there's a recording I made that is so fast that I know I never played it that, played it that fast. Oh, I see and what you're I saying. The recording they, um, plays faster than yeah, how it was recorded? The, yes. Oh. Yeah, and in fact, with the, with the, Teddy Wilson has a piano, uh, little 33, and it plays so fast that I swear I'm a pianist too. I, I couldn't play it. I mean, nobody could play it as fast. It's, it's, the record is faster yeah. than the big 78s. Than the actual recording was the, the played. Original. That's interesting. Yes. And I've always wanted to talk it over with some musicians, which I haven't gotten around. Uh, I haven't gotten around to it. I don't know when I'll ever do it. It, if I it don't might be do it uh, by now. just old-fashioned challenges with calibration, you know, with the machinery and what the way it, it was why recorded. They, why they do that? Because yeah. who is your favorite drummer? Doesn't sound good. Doesn't even sound good. It sounds like the musicians out of breath all the time. Right. Uh, yeah, really. Yeah. That, who is your favorite drummer of all time, uh, other than me? Oh, Co uh, Cooper's always been my favorite. Oh, okay. Great. Well, that was yeah. without hesitation. Did I feel that, I think that Teddy, the, uh, Buddy Rich, of course, is... Hey, he's uh, all right. You know, he, no, he's, <laughs> he's as good as we Cooper. We love Brit he's Buddy as, Rich. Absolutely. He's as good as Cooper. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's as good as Cooper. Oh, yeah. And I would even, you know, then they say better. Yeah. Uh, and I saw them on the stage together, and I was here yeah. with some... Um, publicity men, people mm -hmm. with at the table. And there was Cooper and Rich, dr Battle of Drums in New York. Mm -hmm. And we were right at that table. And uh, we talked about that too, who's better. What was it like spending time with them in person? Oh, very interesting. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, yeah, very well, interesting. Did, did, they, did they understand at the time what you were doing with the all-female orchestra and everything? Did they understand um, did, did they think it was something that would last, or did they look at it as sort of a spectacle, or how is it received by the professionals, your peers, and how is it received by the audience back then? Well, everything has always been on the upside with me. <clears throat> when they talk to me, it's nothing but great, great, great. Yeah. But who knows what they say behind my back? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what they say. <laughs> Did you g receive press at the time? Where oh, you were yes, I have very good press. <laughs> and, and back then it was well received, the oh, acts that you oh, were doing sure, and everything. Because sure. yeah. I have to imagine it was a, a challenging drummer, I was back. really just about the only girl drummer early right. on. Yeah. 
Excuse me. Even now, today, still, I think a lot of females oh, have challenges. Oh, now they're, and they they're shouldn't. coming out of the woodwork. They're all girls. Oh, yeah. Now. They're Wonderful. In the lot, many of them are it's, absolutely brilliant. Yes, yeah. I, so, I'm glad, so glad to see that. Yeah. Because, you know, just what time was high time. Yeah. You know, I want to get your thoughts on something. Some people, and many of you are watching, um, m make comments on our social media and whatnot when we use the term, and not just us, but other uh, media magazines and other shows, when we make the comment, female drummer, and sometimes I think some women are offended and say, why can't they just be called drummers? And when we use the term female drummer, I think there's still an evolution happening, and I think that it's still worthy pointing out that it, it's indeed a female drummer because it, it's still, I don't know how to say this and uh, articulate it real eloquently, but it is still new. It is still going through some measure of acceptance and we never mean it as a, in a demeaning or degrading way. It's to honor really, you know, that they're female drummers, not, not that, oh, it's a separate category and it doesn't belong with this. That's not how we mean it at all. We really mean it as a homage and, a, and honoring the fact that, you know, it's, it's important and it's culturally important. Would you agree with that even today? Well, I like to agree with that because it sounds very good what you're saying. Oh, good. Thanks. I, I just made it all up. That. I don't even remember sounds what I good. said. Sounds <laughs> good. <laughs> no, good. And it's important to us that everybody does understand that. And Drum Talk TV has always been very supportive of helping female drummers get more exposure. And if you're watching and if you're a female drummer, send us your video. We'd like to see more and more female drummers playing. Or if you know of one or you've just seen a great video that you like, send it through our website at the Contact Us link at uh, drumtalktv.com. And, and I can't believe we're sitting here with Viola Smith, the one who really started it all back then. What do you listen to now, if you oh, listen to music? I've always been a symphony. I, I like the symphony. Classical? Uh, I studied timpani with, the, with the, uh, uh, Fisher. Oh. It was a Juilliard Orchestra. I was at yeah. Juilliard Orchestra. I had a scholarship at Schoolyard, wow. which, at Juilliard. But just a, a summer scholarship mm -hmm. with the orchestra. Uh, and I studied with, with Fisher, and I studied with the NBC Symphony Orchestra drummer, oh. Kyle Glassman. Uh-huh. Yeah, I went to him too, two, two, two timpani teachers. The timpani is my favorite oh, instrument. Oh, yes, I have two timpani too, is it? You do? Yeah. 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 Oh, I, I got them when I was 14 years old. Wow. I just loved them so much. I played them in concert band and orchestra at school. Yeah, then, I want to inter I want to interview you. You're, yeah. you're the one who should be interviewed, not me. <laughs> no, no. I have I have this much of a story to tell. You've got this much of a story to tell. Did you like playing timpani? Oh, I loved it. Yeah. What did you it. like the most about it? Was it the dynamics? Was it that there's oh, so the melodic? beauty? Of, I mean, the sound. My goodness, yeah. you know, it's just it's really, it's yeah. really. Oh, that's great. And I had the best two teachers in the country. Yeah. That's great. So you On still top listen. of that, with Kag, uh, and uh, Arm and Armstrong, no, not Armstrong, but uh, Billy Gladstone Gla was considered yeah. the best. Right. People say the best in the world yeah. because they used to travel. That orchestra, the NBC Symphony, used to travel, and uh, he, at any rate, he traveled all over the world. Billy did. Yeah. And that's why they say that he's probably the best in the world. And was, what's great was, about today's day and age is that even. Even 15 years ago, or when I was a little kid, you couldn't. There was no YouTube, and you couldn't see all these videos. Now you can. You can see Viola playing online. You can see Papa Joe Jones, Max Roach, Billy Gladstone, David Black. I mean, it goes on and on. There's the accessibility now, and I think it's important for everybody to kind of look into the history of whatever instrument you play or whatever your interests are. It's important to know where what is happening today came from way back there. Um, it's important to understand that, I believe. Yes. So, yes. Um, do, you, do you still play? I am uh, right here where I live. I came here for two days vacation with my cousin who lives here. Mm -hmm. Lived here, she died last year. Came here to visit for two days and I, I'm still here. This was two years ago. Oh, it was two years two ago. Two years ago and so so then now I, there's a girl drummer here. They have a, their own seven-piece orchestra, a very good orchestra, mm -hmm. and a good drummer. But she, she's a good drummer, but she couldn't play a drum roll. I oh. never knew that. Nobody knew that. Huh. So I, while, she, while I was here, the, the conductor, I mean, the, uh, 
announcer said, a drum roll, please. And she did this. And I was waiting, too, for a drum roll. No drum roll forthcoming. She had, had never studied it. So did you go up, knock her off the throne, and show her how it's done? <laughs> no, no. But the next day we were practicing. I, oh, I nice. had I hadn't taught. I had never taught in my life. I said, "Okay, we've got to get the drum roll going." And of course, that entailed a lot of studying. It's not just picking up just a drum roll. Right. When you start, then then you go start. You can from go scratch. into something. You go yeah. from scratch. It's like like a, a lot of drum lessons. Yeah. Not just what few. Right. So that's we're still at it every. Every few weeks we have a drum lesson. Oh, that's great. Just for the drum roll. Too. Well, no, now we go into other things. Great. Yeah. Next time I come to town, I'll pick you up and we'll go somewhere and play drums. Oh. That'd be fun. <laughs> and we'll, we'll film that. <laughs> and I want to show everybody a couple things. This is a, a really wonderful book. In fact, we're going to reach out and we'd like to interview Angela Smith, who wrote Women Drummers, A History from Rock and Jazz to Blues and Country. And it, of course, features... Viola Smith and a lot of uh, Sheila E., whose birthday is today, actually. This really? This is Sheila E.'s birthday. Oh. Yeah, happy birthday, She's Sheila. She's a great drummer. Yeah, a great mm -hmm. drummer, percussionist, absolutely. Yes. And um, Cindy Blackman is in here. A lot of really, really, and you can discover new talent as well. So uh, we'll reach out to Angela and have her on the show. And also, I want to show a couple older pictures. Do you remember when this was? That was Phil Spitali. When I first joined, the first year I joined Phil Spitali. How old were you there, if you I don't was, mind uh, me asking? I think I was about 30, I believe. About 30? I think so, thereabouts. Great. And you could see, now there is a drummer, there's a few drummers, but one in particular that has a similar setup to you now. His oh, name is Virgil Donati. Was up here? Yes. Really? Yep, yeah, Virgil Donati. I Denati. haven't ever seen a oh, We'll be interviewing him soon, and I'll ask What's him if thing? he's, yeah, I'll ask him if he's familiar with your setup. Oh, really? Because uh, I've never seen it. I just thought that nobody yeah, had ever, I was always wondering few. why nobody ever did it. Yeah, or know? sometimes they'll have like gong bass drums up there. Uh, oh. But Virgil typically has, I think, like 13, 14, or 15 inch toms there. So I'll yeah. email you a picture of it. Yeah. Oh. Beautiful picture. And then there's this other one, has a little collection of a few pictures. Um, this one particular picture, I love this one, says Viola and her 17 drums. No one had 17 drums back there. And what I like about the one up here on top is it's a classic drummer face. So can you believe that this... This, this is... Oh, go ahead. See, there's your there's This your is from Cabaret. Face. This is a Look Magazine cover. Look Magazine oh, says down here. Yeah. That was from the Cabaret. In 1967. Yeah, Look Magazine cover. Mm -hmm. No mind. Oh, that's... Yeah, yeah, that was in the Spitalny band. So we once had you're a, a drummer, even a beautiful face like this can still make a drummer face. Everyone's got their drummer face. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? This was with Major Bowes Orchestra. We were with Major Bowes Orchestra for 10 months. And we played one week stands. Mm -hmm. um, the he, Major Bowes sent sent scouts out all over the country for a girl band, mm -hmm. and he wound up in Wisconsin. And uh, uh, Lloyd Marks and, uh, and 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 one of the dancers of that program, I can't think of his name, they came to Wisconsin and they picked our group. We were twelve piece orchestra, and they augmented it to twenty to. 18 musicians and 10 singers mm -hmm. and we went on the road and every some every every week we had the winner of the Sunday night Major Bo's gong called the gong oh, show oh yeah they get the gong the original gong show it was show. so big the, yeah it was such a big following because of the gong everybody loved to see people go down with the gong <laughs> and so the winner would always come out with us on the road every week and when we played California we would have the winner of last night's program mind mm. you, and people never could figure that out, you know, overnight. Right. She was already on the stage play our feature for the week, every week, all week stands. And she would always join us, and this went on for 10 months. And for 10 months, there were six of us in the family orchestra, in that orchestra. Mm -hmm. So six of us were getting $73 a week a piece, no expenses to for room and board, everything was paid, right. everything paid. Six of us getting $73 a week, in 1936. Oh, wow. Wow. Did we make a lot of money? Oh, wow, yeah. So we sent it all that home to Dad. When we came dad, home to Dad, <laughs> he didn't ask us first what to do with the money. We just sent it home. That was the right. German way, the old-fashioned way, you know. Right. You don't keep it yourself. You give it to Dad. 
So uh, we thought this money would be lying at home in the bank. And lo and behold, we see this beautiful mahogany bar. He had a tavern. This bar from wall to wall, long bar, mahogany, and all beautiful lighting. The most beautiful bar north of Chicago, they said. Wow. North of Chicago, we were 165 miles away. Mm -hmm. And they bought a crystal ball for them. We had a ballroom. A crystal, beautiful crystal ball, also advertised as the most beautiful crystal ball north of Chicago. Wow! So this is what he, what happened to our Bijou Boys Orchestra music. I mean the money. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. But we, we liked what he got. We, That's we funny. did that. We loved it. I have a question. Part of your career also included performing with all kinds of other artists and even being in some motion pictures. Do I understand correctly that you did a little bit of work with? Was it Abbott and Costello? Oh, we did a movie with him. Uh huh. Movie with Abbott and Costello. A movie with uh, with uh, Ella Jones. Mm -hmm. It went to Hollywood for two months. I mean, one month each for each movie. Right. Yeah. What was that like? Well, that was a thrill for us, you know, to be out there with the stars. Right. And talk to so many stars. That was fun. And I don't know how many really young people know who Abbott and Costello is, but certainly people my age, I'll be 52 coming up real quick, and I certainly well, know who stars. Abbott and Costello is. They were big is. stars. They were funny people. Yeah, back comedies, then, did, comedies. this many years forward, what do you think of when you see the longevity of what they did way back then, and Ella Fitzgerald and Frank Sinatra? I played with Ella Fitzgerald. Yeah. yeah. The fact that we're in 2014, we're going to 2015 in a couple of weeks, does it surprise you that the, they still have, po they're still relevant, that they're still popular? Oh. Is that With interesting the Oh, no, it doesn't surprise me. Really? No. Because yeah. to me, so many of the old timers sound better to me than the new stuff. So, yeah. you know, sure. I was just reminded, but Ella reminded me of something. We had a, a Stars Night at the Paramount Theater in New York. Mm -hmm. We had Chick Webb there, Ella, yeah. Bob Crosby. I sat in with Bob Crosby. And the Andrews sisters, no, the Boswell sisters. That was a Boswell mm -hmm. sisters days before yeah. Andrews sisters. Right. And the Andrews sisters, I worked with them for a year. Andrews really? sisters. Wow. Years tour, just before, by Beers Mr. Shade. I heard them sing that before, before it was popular. Well, I have two last questions, if that's okay. One is, um, I know everybody wants to know this, and I wouldn't be responsible if I didn't ask you this, this first of the last two questions. What do you, you just turned 102 years old, and, and two years ago when you turned 100, you moved to Costa Mesa, so now you have a fresh start for the next 100 years, which is great. <laughs> and what do you attribute your longevity to the most? Which is, was it the smoking the, the cigars? Was it the vodka? Was it the dancing? What, uh, <laughs> what, what would you say I it stopped is? smoking. I smoked a few years and didn't inhale. Good. And, and I drank the glass of wine for years. I mean, dating way back to when I went to Europe. Right. I mean, this is... So many years ago, mm -hmm. like 30 years ago, I've been drinking the wine, not just every day, but right. mostly, mm -hmm. since Europe. And um, exercise, I've always, I'm into every, all the, all the exercise, anything that's exercise I do. You like to stay physically and fit. tennis and uh, anything yeah. that's moving. Mm -hmm. I, I did a lot of exercise in my life, nothing but exercise. Do you still play tennis? Oh, no, at okay. age 29, I went to the doctor. And they said, I asked whether I could continue playing t tennis. He said, I'll take a, 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 a walker machine, you know, the mm -hmm. walking, yeah, yeah. to, to take Treadmill. you out. Yeah. And uh, he said, hey, you can go on and on indefinitely with the tennis, you're okay. You'll live to be, he said, you'll live, uh, your, heart, your heart will never give out. Wow. He said, your heart is so good that it's because of the exercise. Yeah. So early on. And physically and playing when drums. I was so young, doing this yeah. all the time. I attribute it to that. So he said, you'll, you'll never, you'll, your heart will last as long as you left. You'll not die from a heart attack. So that would, okay. Well, you, okay, you I certainly got your money's worth from that doctor. He oh, was right. yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> not everyone can say that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so for my last question, it's a Viola Smith fun fact. We always like to ask questions that have nothing to do with drumming as a fun fact, kind of a personal experience little fact. In all your traveling uh, through the United States, when you went to Europe, what's the one 
destination that sticks out in your mind that is most memorable for you and why? Out of all the places you ever traveled. Paris. Paris? Yeah. Is the city really as romantic yeah, as they say? Yeah, it is so romantic. I had tears in my eyes. When I walked out of the short Sag Hotel where I stayed, walked out down to the Champs-Élysées, mm-hmm. which was right there, and I looked down and saw all those brightly lighted green trees all the way down to the Arc to the Triumph, mm-hmm. all the way down, looked down. It had to be tears in your eyes. It just, yeah. you just couldn't help it. It was so, so beautiful. You couldn't stand it. That's uh-huh. great. Did you have a favorite food that you ate there? European food, no, not particularly. I'm no. not that crazy <laughs> <laughs> about different foods. I mean, I li- my favorite food is Italian food. Yeah, but the yeah. spirit of the city is what oh. really got to you when oh, you were there. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. Viola, thank you so oh, much for it's joining been a pleasure. us. I, I enjoy oh. bringing back these memories to me because oh, I haven't thought of these things for years. Oh, now. thanks. And we will do this again sometime. Oh. We'll, well, next time I'll bring a couple little drums to play on or we'll mm. go somewhere and play some drums and have some okay. fun together. Maybe well, even drink you. a glass of wine. Oh, that would be a pleasure. Yeah. And thank <laughs> you, everybody, for watching. Thank you. The drummer with the biggest heart has joined us on Drum Talk TV, and I'm absolutely Well, you have to ask one question. Oh, which one? Why didn't I get married? Oh, why? Because I, yeah, wait, because didn't of my you fiance, get married? When, when I, when I, he went away. Right. By the time he came back, I was going with somebody else. Oh. He, he was away three years in the well, war. Why didn't you get married war. after that? No, because I was going with somebody who interested me more. Gotcha. Most, and then, so we, there, it was a case where I continued going with him. It's never okay. too late to get married, you know. Oh. That's right, too, but he's not around anymore. (laughs) Oh. (laughs) Viola Smith, she's available. (laughs) Thanks for joining us, everybody, and have fun watching all our interviews with your favorite drummers, educators, and manufacturers of great gear at drumtalktv.com. I'm Dan Schinder with Viola Smith saying thank you for watching. Bye-bye.